Welcome, everyone. This is Marie Waite, and I'm here with this amazing international business coach, Lori McNeil. Lori, how are you doing? I am fabulous today. The sun is finally shining where I live, and it's nice and warm, so I'm happy. Awesome. Well, it's so nice to see you. It's been a while since it you and I uh, met. When was the last time you, you and I, uh, were we in an event? The last time, yes, at the Firefly Seminar. That was the last time, right? Yes, that was probably the very, yeah, the last time. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then um, you and I started, um, actually, we, we, you were introduced to me by Dr. Stephen Kalaluhi when you uh, became one of the cast for the Business Doctor TV, right? Yes. And, and uh, do you remember that day when... I, uh, I do. I do remember that day. Man, that seems like forever ago because um, it's already been, what, a year and al almost a year and a half, I guess. Yes. And it, I do remember that day because we hadn't met yet and I walked in and I signed in and um, was told to find Marie, but I didn't <laughs> know who you were. I didn't know because we hadn't been introduced yet. So I'm trying to, to figure out who who Marie Waite was, and I was so excited to finally meet you, and that was about a year and a half ago, which is amazing that it's been that long. Yeah, that was awesome, though. Uh, there were a lot of people during that day, and there's so many new people that I met, including you, of course, and so excited about the entire filming day. And uh, it was the first uh, episode that you were in with the Business Doctor TV, right? I was in the very first pilot episode. That's correct. Yes. Oh my gosh. It's amazing. And it was such a blessing to get to know you. Uh, you were also at the premiere when we did it here in the Temecula Valley at the um, Temecula Cinema, right? And that was a blast. Uh, you, you were beautiful with that evening gown that you were wearing. That was beautiful. Do you, I mean, I still remember it vividly. Yes, that is such a fun gown. I, you know, I definitely am a girly girl type and I have a lot of beautiful gowns and I love wearing them. And it was just such an amazing opportunity to get to wear a beautiful gown and celebrate the success of the show. And it was just a really great evening. Yeah. Okay. So part of what I know about you is you were also in a beauty pageant in the past. Yes. Can you tell us more about that? Sure. I actually started um, pageantry when I was in high school competing as a young teen. And at that time, it was just supposed to be kind of a high school, a high school thing to get scholarships, to be honest, and to meet women and to showcase volunteer work and all the great things that pageantry has to offer. And then I went to college um, in Idaho, actually, at the time. And I, and I thought for many, many years that I was leaving pageantry, um, you know, behind me, that that was kind of a thing that I did in my teens. And then I, I got married and a whole bunch of years went by. And then there was okay. a time when I, re when I was pursuing graduate school. And I had remembered get receiving um, over three uh, million dollars actually in scholarships as a teenager. Wow. And so I remember thinking, oh, I wonder if there are graduate level scholarships in pageantry. So then I began to research and try to figure out um, what was available at the Mrs. level, because I was, of course, you know, married at that time. This was many, many years in between these two things. And and discovered that um, there were not scholarships available um, for most pageant systems that I would want to participate in because there was just a heavy, heavy focus on, um, on volunteerism and family and, and marriage and community. And the focus was very, very different for a married um, woman competing than, than a teenager trying to get scholarships to go to college. So I put that on the back burner Okay. And it's always something that stayed with me in my mind because it was still so such an amazing time that I remember having in high school, and it was still very interested. I was so very interested to be involved in the um, volunteer work and causes and nonprofits and things like that at a different level at the, uh -huh. in the midst of competitions. And so after I attended graduate school, 
I actually then applied as a missus in a first pageant as, as a missus, as a married woman, and had a blast, had a ball. I actually um, competed in the Mrs. America system and then wow. actually went on to, and then received actually a volunteer service award um, for over a thousand hours of volunteer community service um, in, a, in a year through the uh, Mrs. America system. And then I actually then was, had the honor of representing the state of Oregon as Mrs. Oregon United States in oh 2016 <laughs> and then went on to nationals and competed on the national stage in Las Vegas. So it's wow. been an amazing, um, amazing experience because I met so many just incredible women representing um, so many amazing causes and nonprofits and events and organizations and all these things. And it's really truly where I started to think about my own legacy work that I do now actually yes. stemmed from competing in the in pageantry as a missus and delving deeper into the idea of living your living your life on purpose in a completely different way. So it, the pageantry has a very, very, very special place in my heart because of the amazing opportunity and growth that I experienced throughout my years as a teen and as a married woman competing. Wow. And I love it. And I get to dress up and it's super fun, uh, of course, in that way. And just everything that pageantry has to offer. There's so much more to it than people realize. That is incredible. Have you ever thought about coaching uh, women and young, young girls in, from the pageant, pageantry? No? No, no. I love coaching, of course, as an international coach, but um, I've never thought about being a pageant coach specifically. But of course, if anybody asks me about it, I'm more than happy to give them tips and tricks. I think that will be awesome. I, I can see it because you're an amazing coach, uh, especially for a lot of business people. And then if you also bring in all these young girls that just wanted to uh, be mentored by you. I think that would be incredible. I I definitely love helping girls and women um, just step into a greater sense of courage uh -huh. and and power into whatever it is that they want to create in the world. But the the co it's expanded past that. The coaching that I'm involved in now, as you know, is more international business coach, and I work with men and women from all over the world. Okay, I see. And the only reason why I was thinking about that is because I have, uh, I know this um, lady here in our community, uh, North County, San Diego, and she puts together a beauty pageant. And there's, there's a lot of young girls that are in there, but it would be great for them to be connected to you just for coaching because they're all competing. And if you, if you, in, you know, uh, give them a lot of your insights in terms of the mindset for going into a competition and at the same time some of some of the the tips that you you learn from the entire journey i think that would be amazing for them absolutely always willing to help feel free to to connect me with whomever and i'd be more than happy to i think i will connect you yeah. i will definitely connect you because i can see it where it's there's going to be a complimentary um benefit for for both so uh Absolutely. and the fact that you know uh you've gone through the entire process and you're a coach or you're an international business coach that's a good combination don't you think <laughs> absolutely and i love pageantry and i i love helping people accomplish their goals which is which is one of the reasons i love pageantry because it's just a complete support system to help you accomplish goals at so many different levels. And uh, so yeah, connect me, feel free to connect me. Yeah, and you know that I put together fashion shows too, right? I did know that. I okay, know so that. think about this. This is like our brain <laughs> is working right now where you have the ability to mentor and coach all these young girls. And I am connected to a lot of the fashion designers. I mean, talk about putting together a huge event where you know, I would bring this one, you know, this lady that I was talking about who actually uh, puts together the beauty pageant here in town and combine it with the fashion and your coaching. I mean, that's, that's a very powerful combination. 
think about it. I have not heard. I think I've, I've, I've witnessed some of the beauty pageants out there, and some of them are talent pageants too, where um, they were coaching them for, I would say, several uh, weeks just to do the choreography and everything like that. But I wasn't sure if part of the coaching is also developing their mindset into something powerful. Because to go into a competition, you have to have a very, very strong, you know, um, focus and and outlook on the entire competition, right? Absolutely. Mindset yeah. is huge in, in life, in anything that you're doing. Mindset is huge. It's foundational. And for, if, for, the, for people that don't understand that, they don't understand what they're missing. Yeah. And it's so, it's so huge. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're doing, what type of business you're doing, if it's online, brick and mortar, uh, if you're a stay at home mom, I mean, just your mindset is so powerful. Yes. It's so important for people to, to really understand the power of that and how to, how to use your mindset yes. just to be in, just to be a happier, healthier person in everyday life. It just makes such a huge difference to fully understand the power of that. I think that'll be awesome. I mean, I can totally see it. I mean, I know that you have a lot of clients internationally, and this is another uh, market that you might have to <laughs> consider and putting a, a separate online courses just for them. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let's talk about your, uh, your primary business, which is, um, you know, being an international business coach. How did that come about for you? How did it all start? Well, I, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. I had my first um, business in first grade when I was on a loom making, making and selling barrettes at Christmas bazaars. So I started at a very young age learning all kinds of foundational things with, with business and working with customers and even in a really simple way with you know s sizes that customers prefer and colors and design and all that kind of stuff. So even my first grade mind was already learning some very foundational skills that I didn't know at the time would actually serve as building blocks then for after that. When I was in high school, I had a jewelry making business. When I was 11 years old, I took out my first loan and did my first official bank presentation. To wow. Take out $3,500. And I had a, a <laughs> hot dog business, um, very lucrative, actually, hot dog business. Hot dog chips and a drink for $2. Oh and um, and I learned all the ins and outs of that type of a business and and product, you know, pricing and customer service and all the different things there. And then um, as I and then I just really really involved in my community. I'm really big on cust um, volunteer community service. Okay. And so through my volunteer community service, I had the opportunity to really truly serve different businesses, different organizations, community events, and I learned a ton. Of different skills um, through high school in that regard and then when I when I went to um, well actually let me back up for a little bit then I was getting ready to graduate from high school and I was super super involved but I didn't get great grades in high school to be honest okay. and I remember my high school counselor pulling me aside and kind of having a, a careful conversation with me telling me that they didn't think that I was college material and I remember being heartbroken at that time because wow. I didn't really know what going to college meant. I didn't know what my future was going to hold. Most seniors in high school think that they know everything, but you know, they don't. And so, but I didn't. That want is to the second time I've heard where they, you know, um, the people from the school would say that to a student. Yeah. It's just yeah. so. Yeah, it was by a trusted person. I actually really liked this particular um, counselor and teacher. And so I trusted her. And so, there was this internal conflict with wanting to believe her and trust her. And yet internally, I, I felt like there was more. I felt like I shouldn't just accept that as the answer. And well, so I went for you. And <laughs> yeah. So I, I went ahead and applied to colleges. I got in to um, a private school in Idaho on probationary status, of course, because of my GPA. And I worked my tail off and I was the first person in my family to graduate from college. And once I got a taste of what was possible, and once I got a taste of my own courage and capability, regardless of what I had been told, I then knew I wanted to go on. And I, I graduated then with two master's degrees and started working in higher education. 
and was a, a, was actually asked to take a dean's position at a very prestigious private school three different times. And it was- Did then, you go back to that counselor by any chance? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. Because it really was, there, I really had no hard feelings about it because it yeah. actually pushed me in a completely different way and forever okay. changed my path. And I'm so- even though it was hurtful at the time, I'm so yes. grateful for it that I didn't accept, I didn't accept that as, oh, okay, I'm, I guess I'm not going to go to college. What am I, what am I going to do? I pushed, I listened to my heart. I listened to my gut and I, I just wanted to, and I maybe would have bombed out. I maybe would have hated it, but I wanted to actually see and experience that for myself. And I'm so glad that I did because it changed the course of it changed the course of my life. So then I retired a couple of years ago after being in education for 23 years. Wow. And it was through all of my years as an educator that I then sharpened my skills more and more into the type of business professional that I wanted to be in the world. And after 23 years, I discovered that I wanted to do so much more in the world than I was really allowed to do within the confines of the educational system. And I, I value my time as a business professor, but it was just time for me to make that leap and make that change and actually serve people, serve business owners, um, and serve the world in a completely different way, in a bigger way. And I'm so glad that I did. You know, I had a lot of people say, Laura, you're crazy. Like, why are you giving up a salary and you know, benefits and all the stability <laughs> that that brought. And it was really something in the desire inside of me that was just screaming after a certain point. And I knew that I had to make that change um, and to not, and to not settle just for that, just for that paycheck or that stability. And, and I'm so glad that I did because I'm able to coach people and speak on stages and write articles and more or less be featured in over 500 media outlets a year wow. and help people on a completely different level than I, than I was before. Now, a part of that process was a really easy transition for me because I already had been teaching business for, for a lot of years. And in order to be competitive in higher ed, a lot of people know this, you need to have published work you need to kind of um, be, you need to put yourself out there and you need to develop some of your own stuff. So I had already been a published author. I had already been speaking on stages for conferences and things like that. So I literally just took the framework and the foundation that I'd already spent, you know, my whole life creating and wow. basically poured that into creating my own international company. And everything that I'm doing has just been taken, you know, 10x. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And so I love it. I love what I do and I love my life. And I'm so glad that I had the courage to make all those different leaps. Um, because I, the, the untapped potential in people is what, is what just makes me just cry for yeah. people because there's so much potential out there. And when you have the courage and when you have that faith over fear, the amazing possibility that's out there that you don't even know about until you've taken that next step is absolutely just something that you can't really make people understand. It's truly indescribable. You have to take that first step because the next set of options are not even known to you unless yes. you do. You have to do that. So it was people that get stuck in that paralysis by analysis. Mm -hmm. They don't even know what they're missing because they get so stuck in trying to do it right or not wanting to waste time or not wanting to waste money. And of course, I understand that. But what people need to understand is that until you take that next step, you don't even know that next opportunity. You don't even know that next person. You don't even know the next amazing idea you're going to have. There's all these different options that you don't even know are that are going to surface until you just take that next step. And that's what I love helping people understand and then helping them through that journey and navigating that process to a life that they didn't even know was possible. Well, one thing that I admire about you, Lori, is you are brave and you're not afraid of anything new. Uh, and that's, that's what I admire about you because I, I have dealt with so many people when I um, present an, an idea to them there, when, when there's doubt and uncertainty, people are just afraid to take that step. 
you know, to make that leap. And, and sometimes you have to, you have to really talk to yourself or, you know, uh, really listen to your heart and, you know, and see if it really makes sense to you. Right. And you have the ability to really uh, see the value of ideas out there. And that's what you have done. Um, and that's what I've observed about you. You, it's, it's good to hear some of your stories because, you know, from, from what you have told me, it really speaks about, uh, about your character. You really have a very strong character that is going to be very beneficial for a lot of people because of who you are. And, I, and I'm glad that I, we had this talk and I got to uh, hear your story. And I admire you. I guess, you know, I am so glad that I was connected to you. And I, so what about the future? What is your, what, what can you foresee in, in the future of coaching? Yeah. Oh man. That's the sky's the limit, right? Because new opportunities are presenting themselves to me every single day. So every single day, you know, my picture is bigger and bigger and bigger. What's really interesting, of course, um, right now, for instance, I'm not on physical stages traveling around the world. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing, yeah, we're, all, we're all at home. home. <laughs> I'm doing a lot more virtual stuff. And so I've had to, you know, pivot like, like the world and, exactly. and get creative with what that looks like. But what's interesting is that I'm already booked for, to be back on stages. Um, I'm booked pretty solid, um, like August on. So, and of course that's always a little up in the air because nobody really knows when the world's going to, you know, open yeah. back up. But and you know, I have the October 10th too, right? Yes. Yes. yes, yes, yes. So my schedule, I'm going to be back on stage pretty solid between August and December for 2020. Um, and so that is just going to absolutely continue to explode. But Marie, as you probably know, one of the few people in the world, I actually do um, have, I do have plans and I'm starting that process to have my own t TV show. Yes, so I'm excited pretty, about that. Yes. <laughs> So there's still some details being put in place, but we're starting to kind of move forward and navigate that and have those conversations and, and kind of figure out what that looks like. I'm excited for that because that's going to be a new way to serve people and to really be able to help people and coach people in a completely different way um, that's new for me. But I absolutely will be traveling more internationally. Um, I'm going to do it. I have a couple things booked actually the end of this year where everything kind of had to be shifted. But in 2021, I'm going to be doing a lot more international travel and just really continuing to expand my reach and my coaching and everything um, globally more and more and more all the time. And then with that, I'm in the process of developing a brand new nonprofit that um, oh. specifically serves a lot of my heart work as an educator going way, way back that will um, support literacy. So I have specific literacy skills that I teach um, that I've taught for years. I have a series of books that I've written specifically for kids that teach um, increased literacy skills. So I'm actually, I've developed a nonprofit to help support literacy skills, um, literacy efforts globally. And so I'm going to be doing a lot more with developing out that nonprofit and really working with different other nonprofits and communities and charities to really strengthen a lot of a lot of efforts around literacy. And Marie, I don't know if you know this, but I actually was an invited guest of the Bush family in Washington, D.C., where I helped raise over three million dollars for literacy a couple of years ago. Oh, my gosh, girl, you are amazing. <laughs> I love that, what I do. I know. I can see it. I can totally see it. Uh, you, you're very passionate. And, uh, and it, it shows from your commitment and from all the actions that you do. I mean, you know, you can really see. You're, you're just shining and uh, doors are opening for you and, and you're just there. You, you're taking it and you're... Oh, I, I'm very excited for you overall, to be honest <laughs> with you. Bye. Now, let me ask you this question. Um, so if someone wants to reach out to you, uh, let's say uh, a small business owner, and what would, be the, uh, what would be the main focus of your coaching to a small business owner? What would be the focus? So whether it's online or brick and mortar doesn't matter. Just okay. any type of a small business owner, the, one of the biggest, so there's a couple of really major issues that I can identify right away. 
And we already kind of touched on mindset. Mindset is actually a huge part of it. It's not okay. something that you just check on the list, you know, check off the list. It's something that as you grow, you have to continually develop okay. and keep in check with that. So I always check the mindset. The other part of that is messaging and your target audience. It doesn't okay. matter if you're selling a service or if you're selling, um, you know, a product. There's a lot of disconnect between um, the target audience or the customer mm -hmm. that you're serving and the target audience or customer that you actually want to serve. <laughs> there's oh, a I'm lot glad of you talked about that. Yes. Yeah, I there's agree with huge you. Huge disconnect there. So, and then uh, along with that is trying not to be all things to all people. So even with a, a brick and mortar um, business, for instance, you try to offer every product under the sun that might serve every type of customer that might walk through your door. And you, and so I, I walk people through the reason why that's actually hurting your business, <laughs> why that's actually hurting your bottom line. And what are you, what are you actually known for? you know, in your business, what are you a rock star, you know, at serving or providing people and then your messaging and all of your strategies and your business planning and, you know, everything really, um, being, it, it made that continuity in that, in that messaging and that branding and everything. And there's so many different pieces and layers to that. But when okay. you have a conversation with somebody and you start to dissect that, there's some really key pieces that I pull out right away that I help them focus on so that they're not so overwhelmed trying to do a bunch of stuff at once. Okay. Well, that is exciting. I think, um, I, I think the way you do it is very powerful and effective because I see that happening with a lot of the business owners where uh, they don't know what they're looking at in terms of their target market. And they don't even know how to connect with their target market, even if they know who they are. It's again, it's the messaging. So I actually, that is amazing. I'm glad that I, I got to know what your uh, coaching uh, style is and your focus, because it's, it's good to understand that because there's so many people that are coaching, but you are all different. You have different, um, different styles and different focuses. So I just need to know. So when I'm talking to people, I can, I can explain to them why, you know, Lori McNeil is the coach or, you know, someone else is, so it's just trying to educate people, but I'm so glad that uh, we, you took the time to, uh, you know, to have this call with me. Last thing is I wanted to ask you, uh, if people want to uh, connect with you, how can they reach you? If you go to my website, it has all the different social media platforms and ways to connect with me. So if you just go to lauriemcneil.com, you can not, of course, learn more about me from that. And I have a brand new blog launching this week. So that's awesome. exciting. lauriemcneil.com. You can get more information and connect with me. Um, all over the place. Just go, go to one spot and, and connect with me on all the different platforms and you'll be good to go. Awesome. Now, anything, uh, last comments uh, from you, Lori, for the people that are at home right now because of the uh, pandemic situation, any words that you can tell them? You know, one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can not only give you now during this challenging time, but always is to be consistently persistent. Consistency absolutely will put you above and persistency will put you above uh, the pile, you know, your competition, so to speak, every time. So it's about not using the excuses um, with the pandemic or the family or the scheduling or the whatever that keep you from showing up. So when you are being consistently persistent, you build credibility, you build your customer base, you build your loyalty, you build your brand, it actually is one of the key foundational things that you need to get really good at and understand the power of so that that consistent, persistent action can work for you even when you're busy and you don't have time to go to a ton of meetings or you don't have time necessarily to be on the phone. What does that look like? So for instance, I'll give you an example. Social media is a powerful tool. If I am super busy, teaching on summits or stages or in interviews or whatever I might be, I am consistently persistent with not only showing up to what I say I'm going to show up for, but I'm consistent with posting on my social media sites. There's no excuses. You schedule that out, you show up, you do it. And I get regular comments in my inbox privately saying how much people respect the fact that I am consistent 
and that I'm constantly putting myself out there. So even when you're busy, even when times are tough, even when you're stressed, you, there's no excuses because excuses don't excuse you. Okay. People don't want excuses. They want consistency to know that they can trust you. People buy from other people that they know, like, and trust. And the fastest way to build that credibility is through consistent, persistent action and showing up and doing the hard work anyway, even when, even when you don't feel like it. Outstanding. That is a remarkable, uh, information, Lori. Thank you so much. I hope to see you uh, after all of these uh, things that are going on and hope to see you soon and maybe at our event. Okay. Yes, and absolutely. So, I'll be there. Okay. Sounds good. Well, you take care and have an amazing day and thank you again for everything. All right. Thank you for having me. Okay. All right. Bye now. <laughs>